So, the same week, the Las Vegas mayor says she is confident that the Raiders will relocate there. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones said at a sponsor's golf tournament that he wouldn't be opposed to a team moving to Vegas. Quote, it has a flair for entertainment, and it has two million people, and they're avid sports fans, the full-time residents. They have a huge visiting contingent that more often than not are fans of some NFL football teams. You add all that together, and it's certainly in a conversation about the future relative to the NFL. One of my favorite quotes here, Jones calls Vegas one of the real crown jewels of communities in the United States. Skip Bayless, mm. do you agree with uh, your owner? <sighs> Stephen A. Smith, when it comes to football decision-making, I've occasionally questioned my man Jerry Jones. You have often questioned my man Jerry Jones. When it comes to dollars and cents decision-making, I never question Jerry Jones. When it comes to marketing or business, long-term business vision, I believe Jerry Jones has some genius about him. He has a great eye for what will work in the future. He was a driving force in getting the Rams back to Los Angeles. And now I think he will become a driving force in getting a team to Las Vegas. And when Jerry speaks on these issues, I, for one, listen. I spent a lot of time around Jerry. He was a big part of three books that I wrote on the Dallas Cowboys. I spent hundreds of hours around him and interviewing him. And I believe in his business vision. I, I believe in Las Vegas now as an NFL destination in ways I never did before. Obviously, uh, casino gambling, internet gambling is now widespread in this country. And the, the stigma of Las Vegas gambling is starting to diminish, or as Roger Goodell said recently on Mike and Mike, the, the, the NFL has softened its stance on gambling as it relates to a team in Las Vegas. Once upon a time, the fear was that players would be susceptible perhaps to game fixing, more susceptible with the, the mob ties in Vegas back in the day. But you know and I know Las Vegas has changed dramatically. It has gone from Sin City you know, maybe going back 20, 30, 40 years ago and, and past, to now, dare I say, it's almost Disney-esque in its family appeal, that, that there's not so much of this, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. There, there's more of a family atmosphere now around the casinos that would appeal a little bit more to an NFL situation, a, an NFL team. My one concern here is what Molly brought up as she set this up, Jerry's talking about 2,000, I'm sorry, 2 million people. I'm, I'm not sure that's enough to sustain a passionate fandom for an NFL team. A lot of people would come and go who would be fans of other teams, and they would buy tickets to see their team play in Las Vegas. I, I'm not sure there's that core of hardcore fans that, that would that would make these games an, an obvious sellout. I, but if Jerry says so, I'm listening to Jerry. In this particular instance, I do as well. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, obviously, he's not to be questioned. He's hype machine personified. The one thing that he knows how to do is generate a buzz, and he knows how to make money. Um, he doesn't know how to win. Uh, and I, let me take that back. He does know how to win. He just forgot over the last 20 years. But that's a different subject for another day. What I would say to you is this. 2.1 million residents in Las Vegas, over 42 million visitors to Las Vegas each year. And Jerry's right. Folks obviously are sports fans. Uh, would I be concerned about gambling? Certainly, I still would. Would I be concerned about the imagery of the NFL because they're so tightwad about everything now, uh, considering you know any bit of negative publicity is something that they believe compromises the shield? I do believe that you're inviting trouble. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And that's where I'm a little bit torn. Would I do it, Skip? Chances are I would. But that's because I'm a chance taker. Whereas in the case of the National Football League, even though they proclaim themselves to be one as well, the fact is that they would be a bit reticent on so many levels because of the potential problems. And you would ask yourself, do you really need to do this? You needed a team in Los Angeles. You needed a team in the second largest market in the United States of America. You don't necessarily need a team in Las Vegas. 
you don't necessarily need that. So you got to ask yourself, way to risk the reward. Would I do it? Sure I would, because I think there's money to be made. I think the fact that you got Sin City, which clearly has tremendous buzz, it would help to elevate the profile of the NFL even more so than it already is. Not to mention the fact that with, with fantasy sports leagues and beyond, uh, the reality is, is that whether the NFL likes it or not, it's associated with that stuff in ways it never was in the past anyway now. So when you take that into consideration, it's worth the risk. I wouldn't hesitate to do it, but I do understand the reticence on part of some people who may feel that way. You also have to take into account that no mm -hmm. owner was closer to the late great Al Davis than Jerry Jones was. Al took him under, took Jerry under his wing early on, taught him much of what he knows about running an NFL team. And now that Al's son is not only running the Raiders, but wants to move the Raiders to Las Vegas, it's possible Jerry is trying to help the son gain a little momentum to get the team in Las Vegas. So it's not like yeah. you would put an expansion team there. He's actually talking about the Raiders moving to Las Vegas, I think. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. He offered to put up $500 million um, <clears throat> of his own money. Uh, there's $150 million they can get from additional investors, and then the rest will come from tourist taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, to build a 65,000-seat stadium. Uh, so, you know, again, if they're able to pull that off, should it be something that the NFL strongly considers? Absolutely, because there's a few teams in the league that I would question, do they need to have an NFL team? Mm -hmm. Yep, I would agree. Their respective cities. I think that Las Vegas could do a far better job in promoting the NFL brand yep. and, 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 and bringing quality football to that area that it would benefit the league far more to have a team in Vegas than yep. it would in at least three or four cities that, the, that already have NFL teams. No, I got it, but it would hurt my heart to see the Raiders leave Oakland, yeah. California. Yeah, I don't want them to leave Oakland. Yeah. The Oakland should have a football team. Yeah. Oakland should have a football team. I think you could argue, too, it could help the sport internationally, potentially, too, because all Good. the international tourists. Interesting. NHL also eyeing Vegas, but that's for an expansion team. Up next, Jordan Spieth, his collapse, one of the most memorable at Augusta in sports history. So could any athlete right the ship after collapsing in that grand fashion on that stage? Find out next. The Warriors close it out in five thanks to Chef Curry cooking up 14 of his 29 points in the fourth quarter. So now Golden State will face the winner of the Thunder Spurs series in the Western Conference Finals. Now, according to our basketball power index, the Warriors would be slightly favored against the Spurs at 52 percent and heavily favored against the Thunder at 71 percent. Interesting. Stephen A., what's the better matchup in your opinion for Golden State? Well, I think the better matchup for Golden State <clears throat> would be San Antonio because of age and attrition. Um, you know, they play a, slow, a slower pace. They're obviously a, a smarter basketball team. Uh, they're very comfortable playing together. But based on what we're seeing in, these, in this series against OKC, OKC seems to be the younger team with fresher legs, uh, not concerned with age, attrition at key pivotal positions, etc. Whether it be Tony Parker or Tim Duncan, to a lesser degree, uh, Mono Ginobili. But I think with Oklahoma City, you're talking about two of the five best players in the world. You're talking about a team that can go tit for tat with you. You're talking about a team that can be down 21 minute and up five, five minutes later because of how explosive OKC can be and how they can come right back at Golden State. They don't play with the precision and the cohesiveness of a San Antonio Spurs all the time. But from a talent perspective, certainly Oklahoma City is, is Golden State's equal compared to anybody else in the NBA as far as I'm concerned, which is something that I've said all season long. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that either OKC or San Antonio would lose or win to Golden State. We don't know. And if you're Golden State, certainly you don't underestimate either team at all. But in terms of athleticism and what you would have to deal with on a game-in, game-out basis, based on talent along with youthful exuberance, I definitely believe that OKC is more formidable than San Antonio. So I, I'm not quite getting you because you've told me now for several weeks on this show that Oklahoma City would pose a bigger threat to Golden State than San Antonio, which is why you're rooting for Oklahoma City because it would be not only better box office, you give them a better shot 
in part because of the games they played, the one you went to Super Bowl week, the, the next one at Oklahoma City where Steph hit, hit that 40-foot shot or yep. whatever it was. So, so but you're, then you start off saying San Antonio's the tougher matchup for Golden State. And I don't get which is it. No, no, no. I, I, said go, I said OKC because of their talent, but I'm saying the way that San Antonio plays, the minimal amount of mistakes that they make, and the way they're capable of dictating pace, based on what we saw during the regular season, Skip, that would be a tougher foe for a team like Golden State, who's incredible, but at the same time, mercurial in some senses, where at, at, when, when they go up against a disciplined bunch, sometimes it can be problematic for them. Remember, I was in San Antonio when San Antonio beat Golden State, when Steph Curry and Klay Thompson had combined to shoot two of 18 from three-point range. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I'm simply pointing to San Antonio's discipline. But at the same time, what we've seen against OKC it seems like age and, you know, other things have kicked in more so than we thought they would when we were watching San Antonio during the regular season. So not only did I believe that OKC was a better matchup talent-wise, but now based on what I'm seeing from San Antonio in this series, it's even that much more better. And because of it, they would be a tougher foe for Golden State okay. than San Antonio to me. Okay, I got it. But it's funny that on a day like today, the bandwagon is rolling for OKC. The emotional pendulum has swung back in favor of the Thunder. And the runaway theme of the day is that the Spurs are going to get run over tonight in game six in Oklahoma City. So I'm sure it's jarring to many people, if not most people, to, to see that our basketball power index still says, hanging in there as I'm hanging in there, very by, by saying, Wait a second, time out, America, bandwagon jumpers. 48% chance we give the, the Spurs to win against Golden State, which is pretty high, 52 to 48. So it's, they're saying that would be a pretty close series. But the Thunder are only getting 29% love from Basketball Power Index because they're saying that Golden State would have a 71% chance of beating the team that you would like on their firepower and their younger legs to, to give Golden State a better run for its money, right? Yeah, but Skip, nobody, nobody's assuming that OKC is going to steamroll over San Antonio. Well, You're simply I don't know talking about, about that. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't get that impression. Every I game, you saw me, with the exception of the blowout in game one, it's been a nail biter, games two through five. It's just that you surmise that them being on their home court in a game six. With the closeout ability that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook have, when they're in this position, they usually smell blood and they close the deal, including in the past against San Antonio. And I think what you have to <clears throat> stomach, what we're seeing from Tim Duncan, nobody saw this coming. You expected Tim Duncan to just, you know, go through the motions during the regular season. Yep pop to monitor his minutes, mm -hmm. and then come playoff time for him to resemble how he looked against the Clippers in the first round last year. Nobody expect to see this. Skip, yesterday I was on my radio show and I read Tim Duncan's stats. The man has not scored in double digits this entire playoff, these entire playoffs, mm -hmm. first round against Memphis, yep. second round against OKC. He's got two two-point games. Mm -hmm. He's got one game where he scored zero. He's got four games where he has only registered one field goal. This is unreal. No, I, I no one you. saw that. Yeah. No one saw that. And so what you're asking is for us to believe in a closeout game that David West and Boban are going to step in and give you what Tim Duncan can't give you anymore, and that's going to be enough to beat OKC. That's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Yeah, remember, L LaMarcus can fill that void also. He, he's 6'11 yes. and well, long, and, and he's, well, a, he's, he's their best rebounder. So don't well, diminish him well, on, I, on the no, board. Diminish I'm him? About. I'm I, relying on I him. I got it. I'm relying got it. on him. Okay. Yeah. So, again, BPI is looking at the Spurs as the number one defensive team in basketball, as a team that rivals Golden State in percentage of three-point shots made, not in numbers, but in just percentage, they're a higher percentage three-point shooting team. And they're looking, I think, at a Greg Popovich who is known for making his playoff series adjustments and gives them some advantage just on sheer 
coaching brilliance and experience. So, so that's why, and, and this is the bottom line to tonight, and I'm, I'm going to ask you if you're surprised, my Spurs are a two-and-a-half point odds maker favorite, a betting favorite, tonight at Oklahoma City. Are you surprised by that? I'm a little surprised because again, one and if a half. you're watching, one, I'm sorry, if they were two and a half yesterday. Yeah. It went now down it's one, one and a half. Yeah. And if, that doesn't surprise if, me if, that people are jumping on yeah, that bandwagon to bet it down. Yep, go ahead. If you watch, if you watch, Lamarcus Aldridge, talent is unquestioned. What you're questioning about him is the moment, and will he rise to the occasion? In the case of Tim Duncan, the belief is Father Tom has kicked down his door. With with Tony Parker. This questions about his health. Yep. And how how and, and 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 how much attrition may play a factor in it. And then of course we question the aggression of Kawhi Leonard. We know what he brings defensively, but can he bring it consistently offensively? Is he willing to do that? There are too many questions when you're going up against a Russell Westbrook and a Kevin Durant in this situation because you damn well know what they're gonna do. Yep. Hope you packed a black suit. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be a sad day. Skip sad day? Yeah, sad Funeral. day. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of the silver and black, Vegas, baby. They tell us what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And the Raiders could be making a move to America's playground. And one of our favorite NFL owners loves this idea. We'll tell you who that is and if we're on board when we come back.